In this movie, we're going to take a look at some useful ways to use blend modes inside of Premiere Pro to fix and enhance your overexposed footage. Darken blend modes. And then below that are the lighten blend modes. When dealing with exposure issues, we will primarily be staying in these top two categories. We're really not going to touch the uh, contrast blend modes too much or the inversion blend modes down here or the component blend modes. We'll take a look at how to use these in a future week's tutorials. So let's come back up here and specifically for overexposed footage, we're going to be staying in this category right here, the darken blend modes. These five blend modes darken colors, some by mixing colors in much the same way as you might combine paint colors together. Each of these modes does some different math in order to produce different results. Uh, some are a little bit more subtle and some are certainly more drastic, okay? But without breaking down the math, most people approach this in very similar ways. Now, usually the most reliable blend mode to start with is multiply, okay? This is often a great place to start when you need to introduce some contrast and drop out some of the lighter values of the shot. If multiply is not going to quite do it and you need a little bit more punch, you can move on to what I would say the second choice is, which is linear burn. And then you can go to color burn for even a little bit more punch. Usually darken is a little bit too subtle and darker color usually doesn't provide enough contrast. But each of the other modes are doing some pretty interesting math to give you different looks with different levels of detail in the dark and light parts of the image. At any rate, we're going to choose multiply here. And immediately when I do that, you see the shot has more contrast. Now notice that if I take the shot with the multiplied blend mode and duplicate it again, option drag or alt drag up, uh, it gets even darker. And again, darker still. Now this is too much, so I'll go ahead and get rid of these top two. But what I could also do is combine blend modes. So let me just duplicate this video again, uh, which is currently set to multiply. So I'll option drag this up. And as I said before, probably the next most often used blend mode is linear burn, and it gives it just a little bit more punch. All right, so I'll go ahead and select this and change it from multiply to linear burn. And uh, it's much too contrasty here, but what you can do is actually start blending your blend modes. So I'll take opacity and just start to dial this way back. And I'm looking at my blacks mostly, but I'm looking at the darker parts of his face. I'm looking at his jacket. And I think I'm pretty happy with the way that looks right there. So once you have several blend modes working together, you'll likely want to apply the color correction to an adjustment layer above everything. So let me just show you that right now. Um, let me go back to my project pane and I'll go to the new item menu and adjustment layer and it sizes it correctly for me. So I'll say, okay. And I'm gonna add this right above everything like so, okay. And uh, again, I'll grab my three-way color corrector and make some basic adjustments here. And remember, you can always dial down the opacity of your adjustment layer too by bringing it down like so. So you can find the right value here as well. All right, now we've got several things working together, okay? And you can come in and start to manipulate this a little bit if you want. So if I wanna take my multiply layer and bring that down, you can see how it affects the image. Okay, same thing with this one here. Maybe give it a little bit more punch. And we're really able to isolate these dark and light values in ways that you couldn't when you're just color correcting the image alone. All right, so I can continue tweaking this, but just realize that I have each of these layers doing a separate thing, and each one is able to dial into a different set of values. Uh, let me come to this cloud shot right here. I've actually already color corrected it, so I've given it more contrast and detail. And let's do something similar with blend modes here. So I'll go ahead and click on it, and then option drag or alt drag on a PC, that up. And again, we want to try multiply first, like so. All right, and as you can see, our clouds have a lot more detail and contrast already. If I want to dial it down, I certainly can, but I think I'll leave it here and I'll uh, duplicate it again. So I'll go ahead and option drag it up. And here we're a lot darker. Our mood is totally changed. And I think this is a little bit too dark. So I'm going to um, bring it down and I'm also gonna check the other blend modes here. Again, I'm gonna go to linear burn next and color burn. And I kind of like that, but I'm gonna dial it down even a little bit more like so. Now let's play with a little color. I'm gonna add a color mat on top of all of this and put a blend mode on that. So I'm gonna come to my project pane and my new item menu and color mat and it sizes it correctly. I'll say, okay. And let's do a purplish color, maybe something a little bit like that and say, okay. And we'll just call this purple sky. 
and drag this on top. Okay, and of course we can't see through it yet. We need to actually activate a blend mode. So I go to opacity. So um, instead of using one of the darkened blend modes, I wanna use one of the lightened blend modes. And the one I recommend you always start with first is screen, uh, which happens to be the exact reverse of multiply. So I'll choose that. And you can see that it's preserving my highlights here, which is nice. The next one, if you wanna get a little bit punchier, is a linear dodge, which again is the inverse of linear burn. So it's the second choice that I would recommend. Go ahead and choose that. And the uh, third one is color dodge, which is the inverse of color burn. So I'll go ahead and choose that. And I actually kind of like that. I'm gonna go ahead and dial it down a little bit though. And of course, the nice thing about using blend modes here, as opposed to say, just dropping a semi-transparent color mat over the whole image, is that my whites are left alone. I still have nice bright highlights. So again, we'll do a before and after. I'll go ahead and just select all of these. Uh, right click and choose enable, which will disable them. Okay, so that is before and here is after with my various layers of blend modes. And I think that looks pretty nice. But again, I could dial in any amount on any one of these layers and change the look completely.